Hi guys, right, I'm, uh, so I've got to the point now where I'm starting to bolt stuff onto the engine. Um, I posted up how I set the valves and the shims, uh, shimming of the valves and the heads. So that's been done. Uh, I, unfortunately when I was fitting the pistons I thought I was filming, um, but I wasn't, so I don't think I got anything from that. But um, uh, there's plenty of videos out there just using a ring compressor and, and getting the pistons in, but all the pistons, all the work on setting ring gaps and everything, I think uh, has already been put up. Um, so, yeah, so now I'm at the point where I'm just dressing the engine up. Um, <clears throat> the heads went back on fine, thanks to the work I did on getting the manifold skimmed down, uh, that went fine. Um, I fitted Kometic gaskets from Ingenuity. Uh, which are 60 thou thick, they'll probably compress, I'm told only by a, a few thou because their cometic gaskets are quite a dense material. Um, so that's all on, all bolted up and torqued up. So uh, I'm just putting, I've just put on the thermostat housing and I've got the thermostat fitted in there. Um, I've been using and I've also done the water pump, I've just fitted that back in and um, shimmed it up with the correct gasket. I used 10 thou because actually when I put the 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 um, the cover on the water pump there was no gap um, and I had a check with some some plasticine underneath and the, 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 literally there was about sort of seven or eight thou gap between the top of the bolt and the uh, and the uh, and the inside of the case uh, inside of the cover already without any kind of um, gasket on there so I used a ten thou gasket which gives me roughly twenty thou clearance which is what you're looking for um, Everything's timed up. I I didn't film doing the timing change for one very simple reason. There's an excellent video by Rimmers on fitting timing change to stags. Um, it's very well made, much better than mine. So uh, Hans from Rimmers did the, a video of fitting chains, uh, which is on YouTube. And frankly, if you're going to fit chains onto a stag, I would highly recommend you you uh, and, and you need some 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 ideas on how to do it. Then that's definitely the way to, to go. Um, so yeah, so everything's sort of sealed up now, which is great because, you know, having all those bits hanging around the workshop is always a bit annoying because you have to keep cleaning stuff and everything else. Um, so I've just fitted the lifting eyes today. That's the steering pump that I refurbished very early on. Um, that's fitted. Uh, I'm currently working on the alternator. So the alternator didn't work when I first got it. Um, I'm just going to show you. I've done a... Uh, um, I've fitted a kit uh, from eBay, uh, which is... Um, the kit that comes with a uh, regulator diode pack. So you've got the regulator there, you've got the di di diode pack which is all there, uh, new brushes. So the whole alternator, I gave it a really good clean. I did this way back um, and then sort of sat on the shelf waiting. What I thought I would do before I fitted it to the engine, because I am fitting it into the original place that it's supposed to go, you can move it up to the top of the engine uh, and a lot of people do that especially if they're fitting sort of aftermarket water pumps and things I'm going to stick with the standard mounting place but it is a bit difficult to get to so I didn't really want to fit an alternator which I didn't know whether it worked or not so what I have here to test the alternator um, and I don't profess to be an expert on this I've just followed a couple of, uh, of, of, of videos on YouTube so first of all um, when you're testing an alternator, what's really important is you have to have a um, either a resistor or a light bulb in uh, in the circuit. And the reason for that is that excites the coil. That actually is what gets the alternator to work. It's it, and this is the equivalent to the ignition light uh, in the car. So on this, which is a, an 18 a, uh, Lucas 18 ACR, I think it is alternator. You've basically got two terminals which are basically the same, uh, they're connected together anyway so it doesn't really matter which, that's your main power terminal off the alternator and then this smaller terminal is what would go um, uh, to your uh, bulb in the ignition circuit and you connect your ground of the, or the negative side of the bulb, not that there is a side but uh, for, 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 you know, for, for making it simple, the, 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 the one side of the bulb goes to that, the other side of the bulb connects to positive terminal, the charge terminal that comes off there. Then uh, I've got a, a car battery down here which is quite low, it's, a, it's only re reading around um, 11.5 volts because it's been sat in the garage for a while. 
So it should pull a good charge um, from the alternator, which is what I wanted to see. So then it's just a case of grounding the alternator to the car battery. Get your bolts laid out, get it all laid out there. Get the alternator grounded out there to the battery. And then the other positive terminal connects to either one of those blades there. Uh, I'm going to connect it to, so that no chance of anything shorting out. So I want the light bulb well away from everything. Right, there you go. I'm not liking that, it's too close. Right, there you go. So, I've got the bulb and positive terminal connected and then the negative or the ground side of the bulb is then grounded to this other terminal here, uh, the smaller one. And once you've done that, you can get yourself set up so you've got a clear space to work. So I'm just plugging this on and I'll just show you what I've got down here. Um, I've got a car, car battery. I've got my voltmeter set up so if I connect this onto the terminals see as you can see I'm only reading 11 volts at the moment on that battery yeah so that's reading 11 volts at the moment so the, now that I've connected everything up the light bulb is on as your ignition light would be on so if you, if you work on the basis and that is your ignition light then um, the light bulb is on and I'll try and bring you in a bit closer So I'm using an electric drill to power this. I've got the, uh, a socket the size of the nut on the front. It's turning clockwise as the alternator would be in the car. Right, so what should happen when I start spinning is the light bulb... Is that still filming? Yeah. What should happen is uh, when I start spinning, the light bulb should go... Um... So when I start spinning, the light bulb should go out initially. When the light bulb goes out, what should happen then is the, back, the, the alternator should start working. Until the light bulb goes out, effectively the alternator is not working, it's not doing anything. Um, one of the things that you will see, and I have done this to test that it works, but what you, what you will notice and if you listen is that the, the drill is under more, as soon as that light bulb goes out, <coughs> the alternator starts generating more uh, working so what consequently happens is the load on the drill goes up as the alternator starts to work so I'm gonna put my hand here hopefully you can see that I believe that alternator is working correctly. Um, I was monitoring, I was watching the voltage down on the, uh, the meter, and at the moment, you know, with the battery not being charged, it's at 11.8 volts. As soon as I started to get charge into it, that reading went up. It didn't go straight up to 14 volts, it went up over about the course of the 30 seconds or whatever. It climbed up to about 13.6, but like I said, that battery is quite flat. So I'm assuming that the alternator is doing its job. Um, and, uh, and once the battery was char is charged and has, and has been charged for long enough, that the voltage would obviously then go up to the point of 14.5 uh, something volts, which is what you would normally look for, 14.4, 14.3, at which point the regulator would prevent it from overcharging. So effectively, the, the, it would stop producing as much current. Um, so yeah, so that, there you go. If anyone's got any uh, suggestions of anything I've done wrong, or if they think that there is still a problem with this alternator based on those voltages that I'm seeing at the moment, feel free to uh, to drop a note in the comments. But hopefully this is helpful to somebody else if they want to test an alternator before putting it in the car. Um, and uh, yeah, so thank you for your time.